Now we're going to begin probe calibration. The purpose of this exercise is to show you how to uh, build your probe assembly as well as to calibrate some styluses. The probe assembly is what I'm talking about right here. All right. Now this is in book form as far as step-by-step -step procedures. I designed the book to show you step-by-step -step as far as where to click and what screens you're going to see. Okay but the video is where it's at. It's what you want to watch as far as detailed explanation of everything. So I recommend that you watch the video all the way through and then use the book for the step-by-steps. So the first thing we're going to do is step one of the book is from the probe ribbon. This is your ribbon up here. We're going to go into probe assembly. Now the default probe assembly is called probe assembly zero. I'm going to double click this to change the name. So I give it a quick double click and I want you to type in class probe and then select OK. So if you're following along I just did step three. So now what to give it a name is simple enough but what you want to call it uh, is up to you. Uh, some people will use a description of the stylus 2x20, 3x50. Some people will use the port number if you have like an MCR20 rack or an SCR rack, they'll use port 1, port 2, port 3. Uh, it is entirely up to you is what you choose, but for the class purposes, I would like you to use class probe. So I'm going to select OK, and as you can see, it changes the name. Uh, down here, under extensions and touch probes, is the auto joint and the TP20. I'm going to have you hit the clear button, and the reason is, is so I can show you how to build it. And it's going to tell you that it's going to remove it. It's kind of a warning shot. Uh, so we say OK, and it removes it. So on the PH-10M, uh, this probe it can be used with a uh, vision probe. It can also be use, used with different scanning heads. So in order to use used with a touch probe, you have to have an auto joint or just simply an adapter. It is the PA-1 and send over. Now, if you look closely at your Renishaw, it's on your CMM. It'll tell you exactly what it is. Everything's uh, the part number is on there as far as what it is. So once the auto join is on, all right. Now we're going to select our touch probe. So step seven, I just completed. Now I'm using a TP20. You could be using a TP25, a TP2, a TP200, a TP20. Uh, so read the uh, touch probe that's on there. If you're unsure of this, just call my cell phone real quick. You can snap a picture, text me a photo of it, and I'll tell you what to fill out. Okay, until you become more familiar with some of the terminology as far as the Renishaw part numbers and stuff. So I'm going to select TP20 and send it over. Now it shows up there. Now I have to do my stylus. Okay, this is step nine. There's a couple, there's a variety of uh, ways to do this. Uh, if you're using a standard stylus, you can either do 3P or 6P. The difference between the two is the number of measurements you have to take. Uh, 6P, I'm going to hit edit, has a variety. Now I set this up for a 2x20. So if you have a 2x20 stylus, you'll notice that the, the thickness of the end where it screws in is 3. The overall length from the base of the threads to the center of the ruby is 20. Uh, so you can take a pair of calipers and take some measurements. Just pay close attention to what you're measuring. Now the reason there's so many of these is because if you're CAD programming and you go inside a hole, all right, the diameter of your stem is larger than the diameter of your ruby, which means this is going to make contact and it's going to shank out and it'll give you a message. So it is important that you make sure these are measured properly and filled out properly. The other option is 3P. 3P has a lot less, as you can see it changed because I haven't set up something different. It has a lot less measurements in it. So I'm going to grab a pair of calipers real quick. I'm going to do a 2 millimeter ruby. I'm going to measure the stem diameter right above the ruby, 1.3. And the overall length from the base of the threads, it's called like the uh, working length of the stylus, All right, is uh, 20. So I'll say OK. Once all this is done, I'm going to have to hit the update probe assembly, the update assembly button. Now, when you hit the Update Assembly button, if you've calibrated your tips earlier, the reference tip will become grayed out. Uh, it needs to get reestablished. A couple more things. I'm going to talk to you about this Add button right here. If you wanted to add an additional stylus, this is what I was talking about. 
2x20 describes the stylus, uh, you could simply add it and then clear, rebuild this, fill this out, and update it. If you do not have the add button, let me delete this one real quick. Highlight it and hit delete. If you do not have the add button and it's grayed out, I'm going to show you how to uh, get it so it's not grayed out real quick. So let's close this. It's pretty simple. It's just a setting. If you go up to the big basketball in the sky up here in the left and go down to preferences right next to the edit button, exit button, under general and probe assembly, there's a box here. If it's checked, uncheck it. Okay, because that's the reason it's grayed out. This is supposed to prohibit you adding if there's no probe station. A uh, probe station, for those of you who don't know, is a tool changer rack that Renishaw sells. So we're going to say OK to this. The next step along the way is to uh, define some different styluses, set up our reference tip, and uh, calibrate. So we can do this under Tip Manager. Another way to get to this screen right here is to go down here. All right. Right now it says ref tip, but if the zero zero is selected, it'll say zero zero. Any way you get there. So now what the reference tip is, is it's a tool that allows you to relocate the master ball anywhere you want on the table. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to highlight it and hit calibrate. And it's going to bring up a window here. This is populated from the uh, probe assembly. Make sure DCC is checked if you have a CNC or DCC machine. Number of points that you're going to use is five. Uh, we're not going to use this for measurement, guys. All this is is to locate the ball. So it doesn't need to be more than five. And you don't need to check fine calibration for it. So I'm just going to say OK. Now it's going to tell me to locate the tip approximately 10 millimeters above the top of the sphere or half an inch. So use your joystick, drive it over to right above it like I have. And then when you're ready for that, you hit OK. And now, as you can see, it's going to go down. The first hit locates it. And then it's going to measure the five points. As you can see, it's counting down from five. I'm going to let this finish. Once it's done, the reference tip will become green. And that means that the master ball has been located on the table. And when you calibrate all your different styluses, uh, it will drive right to it and take the measurements. And it looks like it's done. As you can see, it went green. So now what we're going to do is, and it brings up a little message here telling you that what your tip size is. You can just left click to get rid of it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to build a couple angles. So I'm going to go up here to new tip. And if you're still following along in the book with me, I know I run a little bit faster than that. We are all the way to, I believe it's step 14 or 15. Step 17. Okay, so in your book at step 17, let's click new tip. A0, Z, B0 are the angles. See how it's highlighted in blue here? I'm going to move this and you can see it moving. It's also updating the label and it's updating the offsets too. So everything's being updated by this. Now, I usually just type it in. Zero, zero. Okay, depending upon the type of your hat, the type of head you have, um, you're either going to get seven and a half or 15 degree increments or indefinite with the pH 20, but you wouldn't be using this anyhow. So you can change the label if you want. I actually like the label. I'm just going to hit OK to this. And it puts it in there. Notice it's gray. Gray means it's not been calibrated yet. So we're going to build another one. In the book, I told you to do 90-90. So I'm going to go to New Tip. You can use the slider bar to move it, or you can grab it. Grab this. All right, once again, you can type it. You could also put a description in here if you chose to. And that's showing you the position it's going to rotate to. When I say OK, it builds it. I'm going to show you how to do the set, calibrate uh, the new set uh, in a different exercise. So just look for the folder that talks about calibrating styluses, and I cover all the different material that's in there. All these windows, everything's covered. So now that this is ready for this exercise, we're going to go ahead and calibrate them. 
All right. So the next step is to hit calibrate all. It's step 21. And this screen's going to appear. Make sure all nine calibrated tips. Non calibrated is a gray. Okay. And there is some functions in here. You could do all the tips. You could do all the tips in whatever program you have loaded. I don't have a program loaded. If I had a program loaded that had like eight or nine different tip angles and I hit this, it would calibrate all the eight or nine different tip angles in the program. Now you can change the number of points you want to if you want a more accurate calibration. But I have to sit here and watch it run, so I'm not going to. And then the add to program buttons explained later. We actually build calibration programs that you can run. So I'm going to select OK. It's going to say please clear a path for the tip calibration. And what this basically means is it's going to drive over to that master ball and start taking measurements so make sure you move your coffee. Hit OK. Now it's going to start taking some hits. As soon as it's done it's going to come up with a message that's going to say batch calibration is complete. Step 25. Once it hits the uh, last point of the 0, 0, the probe will move up in the air and it will automatically articulate to the 90 90 position and this will become green. Okay, there's the message I was talking about. Step 25, just say OK to it. As you can see, everything's green. So if you wanted to save this, you can see right here in this path down here, it's going to, this is the path where it's going to put it. So if you wanted to change it, we'll just hit save. Like, again, I've already done this, so we'll just call it class probe. It's going to ask me to overwrite it, and here's your path name. So I say yes to this. Again, save. You can pick a new name if you want, whatever you want to call it. All right, and then you can change the path if you wanted to. I'm not going to save it, but that's what you can do. And then you can load this later on if you wanted to, and it'll have everything there, and then you just recalibrate. So that's pretty much it for uh, how to create different stylus angles uh, as far as the book form goes. Like I said, uh, there will be a folder in there where I talk about how to use the new set and viewing details, going up here and looking at the tip summary sheet, all that information is in there.